A beautiful young woman did her makeup and put on her best jewelry, as if she were going on a trip or to a party. Only then did the boyfriend take her to the maternity hospital. It was Christmas Eve. Peter also attended the birth with his beloved. Soon Iris gave birth to a son. Peter took her by the hand, and the woman thought that the beloved would finally call her to marriage. But instead he asked her if she was 100% sure it was his child. Iris expected to hear anything but that. Their conversation was interrupted by a doctor who was a colleague of Peter. He gave Iris a bracelet. She couldn't stand it and cried. The woman does not understand how the beloved could do this to her. But she hopes he won't leave her alone with the baby. Peter reluctantly agrees to stay with her. Soon Iris was discharged along with her son. When Peter went to bring the car, she saw a message in his phone from his mistress. Iris called her, telling not to go near Peter. However, the student bluntly told her that while she was pregnant, Peter wasted no time. As they drove home, Iris told her beloved that she knew the whole truth. Peter confessed that he had fallen in love with his student. He had long wanted to break up with Iris, but his plans were thwarted by her pregnancy. This caused Iris to change her mind about naming the son after her beloved. They were met at the house by relatives and friends, who decided to surprise them. The guy asked his ex-girlfriend to pretend that everything was okay. Everyone admired the baby, while Iris tried to smile. In the evening there was a party, Peter's father gave a toast in honor of his first grandchild. At one point Iris couldn't stand it and told her relatives the whole truth about Peter. Everyone was shocked by what they heard. In the morning, Iris woke up with discomfort in her body. She still has a long recovery ahead of her after childbirth. Peter said that he was leaving for his mistress, as he had planned. Iris was alone with the baby. She was not at all happy about the arrival of the guy who walks Peter's dog. The ex-boyfriend by the way did not take the pet with him. A nurse from the hospital also came to the house. Iris sent Peter a voicemail, asking him to come back. The nurse taught the woman how to handle the baby properly. However, Iris still could not cope on her own. Her whole life now revolves around the sun, she no longer has the strength. The nurse continues to visit her periodically. Iris went for a walk with the sun and dog. Her mood got a little better, but in the evening she cried again. Iris was upset that the nurse no longer came to her and twice rejected her friend request on Facebook. The only people who continued to support her were her friends, Cassandra and Babette. That same evening Iris found out that Peter had blocked her on Facebook and changed his phone number. In a fit of anger, Iris took the fir tree outside and burned it. She and Cassandra went to a bar to relax. Iris still hopes that the beloved will return to her. Cassandra however believes that Iris should not forgive Peter's betrayal. The guy who walks the dogs came up to the women to say hello. It turned out that his name was Dew. The guy clearly has an interest in Iris, but refused to join them because he came here with a colleague. Cassandra advises Iris to forget about Peter and start dating different men without love or commitment. The next day, Iris came to the hospital with her son. The doctor noticed that the woman looked very tired and referred her for a blood test. Iris was so exhausted that she almost forgot the baby in the doctor's office. In the hallway, she ran into the colleague of Peter's from whom she learned that her ex-boyfriend was already openly having an affair with his student. Iris felt completely broken. She left an envelope on the hood of his car with photos of their son, and then scratched the paint, feeling satisfied. Soon Iris, who is the host of a reality show, returned to work ahead of schedule. She wants to take her mind off the problems in her personal life. One of the colleagues, Claudia, openly mocks her. But another colleague, Bart, was very happy to see her. All everyone in the office does is gossip about Iris, who was dumped by her boyfriend right after she gave birth. Iris unexpectedly invited Bart to her house for the weekend. In the evening while walking with the child, she saw Du again and came up to him to say hello. Iris complained to the guy about her loneliness. Even the mother did not support her and left her alone. Besides, during the maternity leave, Iris managed to become superfluous at work. Du in turn talked about his sister, who is seriously ill. She used to walk dogs, but now can't, so the brother replaces her to support. On Saturday, Bart came to Iris's house as they had agreed, and cooked a fancy dinner. They started kissing when suddenly Peter showed up, who was very unhappy to see his ex-girlfriend with another man. Peter looked at the album of photographs of their son. Iris hoped that this would make her beloved come back. But when he got a call from his new passion, Iris realized that her hopes were empty. It turned out that Peter and his lover were going to be in another country for six months. 
Iris chased him out of the house and destroyed his entire Star Wars collection that same evening. This gave her satisfaction. The next day she met Babette, who confessed that she too wanted to live only with her children, without the husband. She had once forgiven him for cheating and now regretted it. Iris was surprised by this, because she would have forgiven Peter if he had come back. But Babette no longer intends to tolerate this attitude and has made dates with four different men. Later Iris met the colleague of Peter's. She thought he was flirting with her, but it turned out that the guy wasn't interested in her, but in Cassandra. Iris is learning to enjoy life without Peter. In the park, she meets Du again and asked how his sister Laura is doing. Iris also told the guy that she admired him, because he does all this for the sake of his sister. Iris tried to flirt with her new friend, but he either didn't notice her flirting or pretended not to. One day Iris is visited by her mother, with whom she have a complicated relationship. Iris resents the mother for not supporting her all this time. The woman said her daughter that she did not communicate with her because of stress. She also advises to clean up her appearance and to forgive Peter if he returns. But Iris now doubts that she is ready to forgive the ex's betrayal. As her son started teething, Iris went to the hospital. The doctor seemed to understand how difficult it was for her and said that all women experience motherhood very differently than they had imagined. Soon it will be Iris's birthday, she is 30 years old. She invited Du to a party at her house. In a medical journal, Iris saw an article by Peter, who wrote that he was happy to help underprivileged children in the poor country. He and his student Susan went there as a volunteers. According to Peter, there is nothing else holding him back in the Netherlands, so he intends to sell his house. Out of grief and resentment, Iris got drunk. She was in no mood for fun and cancelled her birthday party. Iris fell asleep right on the couch, unaware that Du had come to her with a gift. The woman was very drunk, so the guy carried her to bed. The next morning Iris felt bad. She didn't expect to see Du in the shower at all. Later, she told Babette that she felt sympathy for Du. The women had no idea that the guy had heard their conversation. By the time they realized this, it was too late. Iris caught up with Du, not expecting him to start talking rudely to her. But the guy clearly disapproved of the lifestyle of the woman who drinks and constantly complains about life while she has the small child. At work, Iris continues to clash with Claudia. The boss told the woman that if she didn't like their new projects, she could just leave. To relieve stress, Iris got drunk with Cassandra and Babette at a bar. Soon they were approached by the colleague of Peter's who began to flirt with Cassandra. Babette also met a handsome man. Iris got drunk alone and later invited Bart to visit. Now nothing could stop her. However, they were interrupted by the child. Iris was forced to go up to the second floor. When she accidentally dropped her son, she was frightened and rushed to the hospital. Bart drove her there. Iris came to the emergency room with the son in her arms. She was shocked to see Du in a white medical gown. It turned out that he was a pediatrician. Iris was very ashamed for putting her son in danger. Fortunately he was fine. Iris fell asleep on the hospital bed with her son. Du carefully covered them with a blanket. The mother picked up Iris and the grandson from the hospital. Besides, Marjan decided to clean the house, telling her daughter to get some rest. Iris was very surprised by this. There were liquor bottles lying all over the room. The mother challenged her daughter to a frank conversation and gave her a box with cards from her father for each year. Iris had grown up without him and had no idea that he had written her letters. It turned out that he had left Marjan for a man. She still has not come to terms with the situation, believing that she was a bad wife. In addition, the ex-husband was disowned by his pious parents. When Iris was six years old, Marjan let her ex see the daughter. But he never made it to them, dying in a car crash with his beloved on the way to the airport. Marjan regrets didn't tell her daughter the truth earlier. She also regrets not forgiving her ex-husband before it was too late. Now Marjan wants the daughter not to repeat this mistakes. Her son must know his father, and Iris herself must forgive Peter and move on. The mother and daughter embraced. For the first time in a long time, they felt relieved and calm. The first thing Iris did was to get all the alcohol out of the house. She also cleaned up all the rooms in the yard. In the evening Iris read the father's letters. It was important to her to know that he loved her and had not forgotten her. Outside she saw do walking dogs again, and she couldn't hold back a smile. Iris also had a terrific idea for a new project. It was all thanks to the father's letters. The boss found the idea very promising, and he gave the go-ahead for its implementation. 
Marjan also participated in the daughter's new reality show. Iris was very proud of herself. Marjan stayed to look after her grandson so that the daughter could go on rest to Spain with her friend. The only thing that marred the vacation was Babette's constant nausea. Iris arrived at the place where the father's hotel used to be, which he named after his daughter. Now the building had long been vacant. The friends went to the local cemetery, but it turned out that Iris's father was no longer buried here. After 20 years, the graves to which no one comes, are dismantled. This was another disappointment to Iris, but Babette lifted her spirits. In the evening they sat in a cafe and had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Babette confessed that after all her many dates, she realized she missed the husband. The next day, when they were relaxing on the beach, Iris saw Du coming out of the sea. But it turned out to be just a dream. Iris was searching the internet for information about Du, who hosted a medical show on an unpopular television channel. Suddenly a handsome guy came up to them and offered to have fun. The women agreed. Babette was met at the airport by her husband and children, and Marjan also met her daughter. After the vacation, Iris felt rested and returned to work, full of enthusiasm. It turned out that her show was a success. But Iris told her boss that she wanted to do more than entertain the public. For example to help some TV station on medical topics. Iris has invitations to their charity event. The boss was obviously interested. At the party she had another fight with Claudia, but nothing could spoil Iris's mood today. Du introduced her to Daphne, a representative of the children's hospital. The guy was glad to hear that Iris's life was getting better. He was also pleasantly surprised to learn that it was she who had organized the charity for their television station. The doctor noticed that Iris' life had changed for the better. She began to see Du more and more often, discussing the joint project. Filming began soon after. Iris realizes that her sympathy for Du is growing stronger. He is a very kind guy who devoted himself entirely to helping children. Determined, Iris invited Du to have coffee together. However, he told her that they were not a couple. Iris did not expect such an answer at all and was confused. In the evening she heard the doorbell ring. On the doorstep stood Peter, who had returned to make amends. Iris was hurt to see her ex-boyfriend again, but for the sake of the son she let him into the house. The next day Iris was visited by Du, who invited her to walk dogs with him and have coffee. The guy realized that he had a liking for Iris after all. However when he saw Peter with the child in his arms, Du realized that he was superfluous here and left. Peter began to make plans for their future together, because after the successful release of the new reality show, Iris became rich. But she made it clear to him that their relationship was in the past. After that, Iris immediately left to catch up with Du. But before she did, Iris stopped by the coffee shop to surprise her beloved. When she saw Claudia here, she was very unhappy. The colleagues started deliberately long to order, so that Iris lost time. However, she was served by another barista, who insulted Claudia. Iris was in a hurry, but she made it in time. She found Du in the park and confessed her feelings by offering him coffee. From now on Iris wants to start her life with a clean slate, without Peter. A year went by. This time at the Christmas party, Iris felt really happy. She keeps in touch with Peter and his family for the sake of her son, while she and Du are doing well. Now everything is as it should be.